Welcome to Glen Lair. It is timely to return here on the 190th anniversary of the birth of James Clark Maxwell. Despite the passage of time, many of the features which so appealed to Maxwell in his childhood are still evident today. Glenlair House, which was badly damaged by fire in 1929, has been stabilised by the Maxwell at Glenlair Trust so that outwardly at least it looks as it did when Maxwell, working with the architect George Barber, added significantly to the original house, left to him by his father John. And government's terrestrial made laws above Most noticeable is the sandstone-faced south wing, which remains the most striking aspect of the building. It is still possible to imagine Maxwell sat at his desk in the large bay windows of the house overlooking the front field and the river. Away from the house, there are many features to remind us of Maxwell's time at Glenlair. The garden, so carefully laid out below the house, would be unrecognisable to James, but he would be heartened to see the size and maturity of the trees he planted. There are particularly fine specimens of beech, both copper and common, of horse chestnut, of yew, of ash, of oak, and even a rare tulip tree which stands just behind the house itself. The wall surrounding the walled garden remains, but the fine Victorian glasshouses erected after Max Maxwell's time collapsed in the early 60s. To the right of the main house lies the gardener's cottage built in 1843, in which the Maxwell family camped for two whole summers whilst the main house was being constructed. The house and cottage face southeast towards the hill to Kirkpatrick Durham, which is now lay, laid out in pasture and trees rather than the heather reportedly present in the mid 18th century. To the north of Glenlair lies the farm of Nether Corsic, also owned by James's father, and further to the north can be seen the hills of Mecklemochram, which formed the northern perimeter of the old estate of Middleby owned by the Maxwell family. The farmyard, designed by Walter Newell, completed in 1843, is still in excellent condition, and at its southern end includes part of the original yard in the form of a three-storey building, which housed carriages for the horses and provided accommodation for the grooms. In the cellar were pens for farm animals, with provision to feed them from the floor above. The animals, of course, provided the central heating for the building and saved on fuel. Reaching for the stars Rowing back to Mother Earth Reaching for the stars Rowing The duck pond, which James is reputed to have enjoyed immensely, has been partially reinstated, although due to the recent extreme dry weather, is not looking at its best. The outflow from the pond, which James likened to the flow of electricity in a wire, still exists and runs underground in a stone drain to the river and thence to the sea. So don't forget your promises and don't unwrap their time For they who steal the spirit Leave the living blind And governments terrestrial Obey the laws above Sailed on
The river is really the dominant feature of the farm, serving as the boundary on its south and east sides for the best part of a mile. Maxwell was much taken by the rocky banks of the River Ur and spent many happy hours playing therein. Thank you.